Bristol's mana entirely. He does have a Caudal, so that is that is one concern, but I think an Ursa with items does pretty well against Bristol. The question is, can an Ursa actually outfarm a Bristleback who has a Caudal behind him? Yeah, it's probably pretty tough. Not. It's pretty tough. Yeah. Well, it's all up to Liquid now, trying to see if they get, I mean, it looks like OG just wants timings, they want to fight. Like you said, it's going to be all about perhaps maybe even that first Roche could determine the momentum and the pace of the rest of the game. So if you're Liquid and you're looking to lock in that last pick, perhaps something that can back up the bristle. You may now is this uh, Liquid offlane Venge? Huh. There it is. That is that is a nice Venge. Cool. I want to see who picks, who picks uh, what. We get to cheat I, here. I oh, like it's, I, it's on the screen. I, I feel like I have seen uh, yeah, Zai play Venge a couple of times and yeah. he will be picking that up. So it will be the offlane Vengeful. Okay, you you get uh, the it's a first shaker because he's just like you know that's his guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's just like you just stay. Like, just give your chair your... will not be lowered. Cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. You you got it. You got it. you. You get to stay up here. Well, there you go. We have some crazy exciting games coming at you right now. This is like I said, game number one. If you're just tuning in, we have the casters ready for you. Are underway. It's going to be Garrison. Thank you so much. No chance Ten being lowered, remaining. but our expectations raising here. OG against Liquid. Lacoste, you were looking at the stats earlier. Are you, are you right? Expectations no, I, I going couldn't into do this? it. No, I could not do it. I almost fell, Gareth, and we don't want to see that. Uh, looking at the draft, I got to remind myself uh, which teams pick which yours. was the last pick when they needed yeah. to have, make some kind of adjustment because uh, this was Ursa last pick which you means called that, it yeah you did you don't i, I love ursa I, I think this hero needs some loving but every single time i see um i see this hero it's like yeah it feels underwhelming you need to hit keep fighting miss. yeah yeah and most of the time it's either hit or miss and most of the time it's a miss but uh, we'll see about this one uh looks good on paper considering what he's uh, playing into because he's playing into bristleback uh, and also core tiny so he should be able to to scale on the other side the uh, Team Liquid with the classic Team Liquid lineup. We're going to run run at you. Use yeah. this Bristleback Coddle, uh, Carpal Tunnel Gamer, <laughs> Matumba Man. Two Hits all keys. timings. Yeah, QW, QW. It's going to be a lot of spam. Uh, um, but yeah, uh, not not too much tower damage on their side. Because uh, it's going to be about the Bristleback. Uh, whenever you play Bristle, you need to hit the damage. Yeah. You need to get the either Hood or Vanguard. Uh, sometimes both. I don't think it's needed this game. I still have to check the heroes one more time. But we're uh, getting old. We're getting old. Yeah. Memories are leaking. Not just boomers here on the casting desk, but also a couple of boomers in the game. Uh, Look Seb, how like Seb, that's, that's, straight up from nursery home. You know, he, he's, he's here. He's down to play. Uh, I don't know. Every single time I see him play, I like we were having battle. a chat the, in the morning. Were you there or were you not? Today? Today. Yeah, you, you were not. I, I don't think so. No, I don't. Because I, I, I was praising Seb, you know. I think uh, he is the, the best player that ever touched the game. And uh, we'll oh, see really? what he, yeah. oh, and we'll, oh, we'll see what he can do oh, in this oh, one. He's playing, he's playing Earthshaker right now. And uh, yeah, the panel was, the panel was talking about uh, whether he's going to be playing Vyvern or he's going to be playing Wait. Earthshaker. I thought, I thought, sorry, I thought they were doing it. No. Uh, no so level, he, he walked into the pit for a second. Level one Roche, uh, not a thing. Only the D-boosters can do that. Only D-boosters can do that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Mickey. Hey, yeah. Seb, they're chasing back. I took a man to zone him away, though. Don't want to go running uphill against the bristle back as Boxy. He chases forward onto BZM. Great Fisher. Will not only stop them in their tracks, but block the path forwards. Come on, can take a couple of clicks from Insania. There's Liquid, five heroes strong all around that top rune spot. Need to repurpose themselves and get spread out a little further across the map to get those bounty runes going. And BZM already oh, at. 20% HP pretty much and has three tangos begins. to work with. Uh, they don't have uh, any region for him. Not ideal. Tiger. Gonna get chased out by Zai. And a very deep ward there from OG in that top dire jungle already. It, what's that? Is that looking for stacks that they want for Bristleback? Oh, yes. If if you're going to stack against Bristle, you got to be careful because he wants to invade. And I see Team Liquid already making an adjustment. They don't want to have uh, this Bristleback, as, uh, Bristleback against uh, Razor, I guess. That was, a, that was a thing. Even though Bristleback can still deal damage with the Razor with the Quell Spray. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, now you're going to be playing against Ursa. But there's going to be Keeper of the Light stealing some of the CS, uh, messing up with the Equilib Creep Equilibrium. 
and uh, yeah, blasting the wave on Ursa. It's not that bad for Bristleback because uh, Ursa is paired up with Wyvern. Wyvern doesn't have that like kill okay. threat, especially My early on. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you see Ursa already at half HP. As you get levels, it's gonna get uh, more difficult for Bristleback. Yeah, looking at this, I would have thought it's like you know rock and hard place. Matu has to lane against Razor or the Ursa. <laughs> Decision either way. Yeah, you can tell that OG definitely didn't expect this because Ursa did not start with the magic stick. He just brought it with uh, his career, so that means that uh, they thought they're just gonna lane normally. Normally. Oh, normally, normal normal in. <laughs> Seb is up top on that Earthshaker. BZM looks like he's doing all right, given that he did start, like you said, with 20% HP coming into this mid lane. And he will get the upper hand because of that. But once we get the bottle flowing and the runes controlled up, BZM can absolutely recover. And he is back against a melee hero, right? Even though Tiny has the toss back, you're still going to be applying a lot of damage and a lot of pressure. Mika does have 19 wand charges already on a mid lane, and he's off to a good start. ACS and going to use his avalanche, deal some damage to BZM. BZM spent uh, a lot of his early mana just to be able to like, harass, but uh, yeah. Hasn't done anything because Bat Rider has very low attack damage, so you need to use sticking upon charges to be able to get some CS, especially against Tiny, who does have like Tiny has 95 damage <laughs> with a tree. tree. You should have hey, seen no, that that's not coming. fun at all. But runes are spawned and his bottle's coming for the Bat Rider, so he should be able to get something going forward, even though he sat 5 CS compared to the Tiny's 9 and 4. The courier coming in behind him. Some pings down bottom. It looks like they might want to have a go at Tiger. Matu and Insania down here have already chipped Are away pretty nicely against run? the Wyvern and the Ursa, so they've got them well, yeah, within kind of kill threshold burn. area, where they could dive tower with the fresh yeah, creep I mean, wave arriving. You can see Seb has some uh, says sound sorry. As you get older, you do have problem with the hearing. His tinnitus is, is kicking in, you got yeah, the high pitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone over there just 30 knows what we're talking about? <laughs> They're ready to get back underway. Ooh. Tommy, did ATF make you buy the mantles? What's that? Wyvern got some mantles of intelligence then. He does. He's got two of them. <laughs> He's going to be dropping it. Uh, Amar is ready. He's like, I got to drop one right now so I don't lose any gold. Yeah. Sure, so. I'm going to pull up there, Tiger. Not successful because of Matu's positioning very forward. Aggressively gets up towards them. One creep will die at the camp, but... That's fine for Liquid, as they've got to pull off into the large Dying camp themselves. And now Matu attack. has that Ring of Health, uh, infinite region in terms of mana coming out from Keeper of the Light. Uh, as you said, Insania doing a very good job of blasting the wave, uh, harassing Ursa. Yuragi constantly on half HP, needs another 100 gold to finish off his Morbid Mask. But that's not going to be sustained. Like, the, uh, the, mm. this Morbid Mask, you need to keep hitting the creeps, uh, hitting the heroes, and I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do that. So this time around, uh, Bristleback uh, probably going to go for Vanguard because he's playing against Viper and Ursa to be able to move some of the damage. And Jiragi has five stick charges. He's been died by the Bristle. He got the heal from Tiger, though. So Matu and Insania just back it up. Done the job they wanted to. Now, how, how dangerous is this for an Ursa? Because usually he's that lane dominator, right? If he's being kept under the boot of Liquid, is that going to hurt him moving forward in the game? Uh, he, like, this is uh, Radiant Ursa, so when you lose a tier 1 tower, you kill a tier 1 tower, you're going to be playing top part of the map, uh, and you always possess this Roshan threat. Uh, okay. So Dame Liquid will need to be careful about it, especially if you manage to steal Aegis from Bristleback, because he does rely on getting one. Now, it looks like BZM's given up on the idea of sitting mid and catching up in terms of lane creeps. He's going to try and stack jungle, get some Ancients going for himself. Now, Sean, Seb, he's going to get the gold and money from mid lane. Ash. CS, uh, Bat Rider, 13 and 3, Tiny, 23. I think one of the most impressive Tinies I've seen is Mickey Tiny. I, th I think he is uh, probably one of the best, if not the best, Tiny player. From the mid lane. From the mid lane, yeah, exactly. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, Yuragi. He's about to die, isn't he? Matsu, full spray's going. Uh, he's going to go for Tiger as well. Bonus one more. on top. And yeah, the Chakra Magic just allows him to keep pumping about? that damage and he'll survive. Even under that tier one tower. Oh, look at Insania, didn't want to go for, for a full Radiant channel time to steal some of the CS. Uh, we didn't talk too much about uh, Zai playing Vengeful Spirit. Did that uh, once or twice during the DPC tour. Uh, this hero can 
pop off, you need levels and you need items. Aghanim Most Scepter, right? Aghanim Scepter Shard. Like, this is the timing you're looking for. So Liquid have a very clear timing. 20, 25, whatever it is, around the bend in the bristle bag with those big items as they have a crack at Amar. But Seb's there with the Fisher. Block them back. Just trading out in that regen battle as OG have the wave. Arriving at their tier one tower for the, the safe farm there for the Razor. There is a three stacks for OG, which could be a bit... They, they don't have the heroes to clear the stacks with, like Ursa with Morbid Mask later on. Batrider needs to heavily commit. To, so there is a potentially Bristleback who can invade enemy jungle and get it. Yeah, if, if, if Mikael and my other man make a move, get a couple of kills, invade, take the stacks. Could be a massive bonus there for Liquid. They're already 1k up, a couple of kills to the good. Seb struggling to Dyer's contend with Boxy. One of, his, uh, one of his better heroes nowadays, Boxy, on a position for Dawnbreaker, it feels like. He's making. Oh, he even the gets the haste through. there. <laughs> Tiger. Up gonna and be down, where are you going to go? Regretting From the mantle. He's really, going to really heal himself. He's fine, oh, fine. Oh, Delays the inevitable death of himself, though. Dyer's He's going to do a little bit of chip down back to Mikke, but the finishing blow is there, while Matu gets a solo kill down bottom. Ursa try to man up and fight him. Five Fury Swipe charges on Matumba Man, but having that Vanguard uh, is a bit too difficult. Also, he is level 6, Ursa's level 4. So this bottom lane, like, this is why I mentioned that it looks good on paper for Ursa, but uh, in theory, because he's paired up with the relatively weak laner in Vyvern, and Keeper of the Light is going to replenish mana, and there's not going to be enough sustain. So this is almost level 7 Bristle against the level 4 Ursa now. Yeah, yeah, you, you just don't have that continual brawling power that Liquid are bringing to that bottom lane. And again, Insania just stacking, pulling, dragging it back as Amar and Seb both die to the rotation of Mickey. Straight up to that top lane, a couple of quick kills and 6-0. It's turning into a bit of a rout here. OG being stomped down by Liquid. And uh, no caster's curse this time around. Dyer's Praise Mickey. He comes, attack. gangs the top lane. Pops off. Pops off as expected. Also, his item build a bit different Radiant than what we usually see. He right. does go for like blink dagger, natural item build. You would call that from mid tiny. But he does get the echo saber and then get back and etc. He's waiting one more time. He's stuck around. He stays off. They thought he left to ditch this top lane. Oh, I'm gonna feel the wrath of the hammer from Boxy. Half HP Razor straight after arriving back in his top Dyer's lane. Top tower is under attack. Oh, yeah, Mickey wants to scale with that Echo Saber oh, right, oh. then go into the blink a little bit later on. He might even get straight up back at him, Scepter, if they feel like there's no need Radiant's for initiation this time around. Attack. But it does also amplify your farm, getting the Echo Saber Radiant before the Blink Dagger. Scanning. This is going to be 10 minute Power Treads, Wind Lace, Magic Wand. Uh, and I don't know if I said Echo, Echo Saber or not, but I'm going to say one more time. Yeah, double Echo Saber, 10 minutes in. So you're hearing it first time here in Sania. This is going to be a kill, and uh, they're going to give it to Yoragi. No, that, that's fine. We saw from the previous picture in picture what Insania just did. He stacked out the two camps. He killed off one of the small creeps in that camp as well. So he made sure it respawned right on time, giving him up to plenty of room. Clear out all of the juicy stacks made up for him. 5,000 net worth, eight and a half minutes in now for the Bristle back. Vanguard Hood, and they're going to start getting well on his way to the Aghanim, who says, Come on, top. Sam tries to save with the picture there, and they've got Zai all leashed up. So a one for one trade out. Boxy goes to the TP home, but Sam will be there with Yuragi to get two kills top. And that's, that's the move you said, right? Ursa leaves the bottom lane, comes top. Yeah, very good move from Yuragi. Uh, like he was off to a bad start playing against the Bristleback and uh, now makes a rotation, gets a double kill. Also, if we click on Viver and take a screenshot of it and try to go for Guess the Hero Edition Professional E-Gamer, I don't think many people would, would be able to guess which hero that is. How is he so shiny? He's got this, like, rainbow radiant costume. Look, look at the, look at the Wyvern. Beautiful skin. Start off here with Seb and Amar. Then out a couple of creep camps. Kind of hoping that Liquid will bring someone top Radiant's to defend tier one. Oh, Bristle can TP and they defend, but he, he needs uh, an extra hero, tower potentially two. Trapping themselves to the tower take. 
We're also arriving at two smoked heroes. Tiny and Tiny the Can we yeah. go on to the Wyvern? Gets the combo straight onto Tiger. Blows her up. And Yuragi slammed down by the hammer while Mavtic did TP in. Reacting to OG's move. And they're going to find kills on course. Armour, the next one on the ticket. Picked off by Mavtic. A dominating Bristleback. Can't be touched right now. Ten minutes in, Liquid looking incredibly strong. Liquid bringing in numbers. There's also a haste rune for Mickey to pick it up. Xenia uh, will replenish his mana in a couple of seconds, so Mickey will be ready to go in. And just another haste trip. He sprints straight towards your rock. He takes down the earth. So the winner's curse is a good one to try and delay Liquid. Hold the lasso. Burning through with a lasso. Oh, he's 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 low. Is it going to attack him? He just doesn't have what it takes. Minkei now unstoppable and Matu. Of course he's gonna die in tier two. Come here, Tiger. Three before me. Give it to the bristle back. Mega kill streak for him. And a toss up on him on. We'll find the razor as well. One by one, they fall flat. That is the lineup that uh, you would expect Team Liquid to run. 11, uh, level 11, Bristleback, uh, 10 minutes in, 10 to 50, that, that's pretty nuts, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Matsu. I mean, we, we saw the player intros, right? Everyone very serious, everyone very you know, dead looking into the cameras. Yeah, well, we're here to play Dota and destroy people. And Matsu showing that off absolutely here in game one of this best. Yeah, so. Matsu very focused uh, on using uh, Q and W, Whiskers Q and Coil Spray. It takes it takes a lot of, uh, you know, effort to be as focused. Come now, he has a Soul Ring and a Hood and a Wand and a Quelling Blade. Plenty of things to cast. Soul Guard here coming in bottom. They want to kill off Seb here. And Slow down any item progression he might desire. We'll try and slip away into the trees. The TP from BCM. Hey, 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 hey. That rider. Yes, I still have against Boxy a bit of distance, but the flake break push back straight into your Yuragi's grasp will kill from the dawn. Your mother would have done much worse. Tiny. Hello, Mickey. He's looking for an opening again. Yes, that's BCM. Good call and brace. Well timed, Tiger. Keeps the bat rider safe and sound for now. Let's get clipped by the Illuminate, but all's good. Radiance middle tower. This is also fallen. tiny with no bottle because he's playing against the Bat Rider and does have Keeper of the Light in his team, so it doesn't need that much mana sustain. You get it from a magic one. Yeah, he just keeps on going. I still got that Tumblr's toy. Helps him out a little bit. What are we looking at for, for Amar? Oh, that's a curse in mid lane. Oh, that's okay. They do have the chain disable here. So yeah. Mid game. Can he can far away. Can he get it? Yeah. Mid game swapped down. They've taken him away from danger. Zai now in the thick of things. Being beaten up by Yuragi. Teddy Bear not mucking around anymore. But a good save. Yeah, spam that Zai J in chat for this uh, magnificent save attack. on Mickey. Zai very sacrificial. Just allows himself to be taken down for the greater good. OG still really desperate to plant themselves in this top lane and get a tower. Easy, I'm gonna try. Look to her. cut the wave, find something in behind. Dyer's top tower. Amar front lining. This time Liquid not responding. What, what do you think about this? Uh, Shaky going for the, the shard respond. rather than the blink rush, which I, I think I feel like we more normally see or have in the past. I guess he feels they need to contest a little earlier because one of the reasons why Shaker is not so popular is you don't get the lane to farm for a very long time. If you do, this happens. It sure does. Especially with all global heroes being super popular right now. We're talking about Zeus, uh, like even Spectre is getting more loving, Dawnbreaker as we see and also Nature's Prophet. Yeah. So you push an extra wave, you get punished. All the gold that you tried to claim. Yeah, Amar treads Falcon Blade going BKB. We sure do have to fuse the blade on Yuragi now, along with that Morbid Mask. So maybe time for a smoke move out of OG to think about that Roshan as they do find Insania. Quick and easy on the console. Static link on the Dawnbreaker illusion. Amar just gonna soak up some of that damage. But really now, it's it's all eyes on the Roach Pit, isn't it, for, for both teams? Most definitely. Bristleback about to finish his Aghanim Scepter, needs Keeper of the Light to stop dying, to keep spamming Gekotl, <laughs> give me mana. Gekotl. Give me mana. Give me mana, please. <laughs> They're getting scouted underneath the ward. 
OG showing four heroes. One line drawn. OG. Yeah, you're right. And they've been showing for a very long time. They're all there. Only one hero elsewhere on the map. That's Seb down bottom, just continually pushing out that dead lane, getting as much of the farm possibly can. And he buys out his shard. This coincides with the timing. Again, Tom's Bastion ceases to exist. A bit of damage though with the Witch is ready. They can swap Mickey out of there if need be. He's taken down for a bit of battle and spell usage, but nothing. So get checked for Tiger. Call the brace will do nothing to save him from the onslaught that comes his way. Radiant Triangle now belongs to the Dire team, and so does Roshan. They know there's no curse for 69 seconds, and they're gonna go inside the pit very nice indeed. The, this Roshan is gonna die pretty, pretty early, even though it's only one level invention for uh, Viscous Goo is maxed out. Look, did you know that uh, I realized it's called Viscous Goo instead of Vicious Goo after 15 years of playing Dota? Well, I'm a next bit of it took me a long while as well. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, man, Vicious, that's Vicious that, that, nasal goo, of course. That, that sounds nasty. Viscous sounds good more. Set on bottom. I'm gonna try to TP out. As is Amar. No stuns on Matsu. Does a lot Dying of damage. A lot of nonsense, Dying but can't stop people from TPing. Oh, next. So Tread's BKB lined up for Matsu's crystal back, and that's gonna be basically end game timing for him. Matsu Liquid, while BZM trying. Career snipe, but unsuccessful. We are now 600 away from the Agonims on the Vengeful Spirit as well. And look at that. All of the stacks paying off. 634 GPM for the Bristleback. We're 16 and a half minutes in. It feels like this game's been going on for 20, 30 minutes because of how Liquid have been so efficient and effective with their timings and usage of these items. Radiant and they're playing so quickly, moving around the map, uh, getting the kills, going for objectives, now pushing tier 2 tower. Radiant using a scan. Same. Trying to figure out this is going to be another pickoff. Mickey with Thumberstoy and the Blink Dagger. BZM not really having a game, is he? 6,000 network from the mid lane, all started off with those early rune fights where he had to start the lane with 20, 30% HP. Incredibly rough for the Batrider this time around. Radiant's bottom tower. Mansu just gonna get himself a tier 2. Unlock the outpost down bottom, get salved up by the senior. Liquid in a good spot just to continue this rampant move across the map. This is why I said Ursa is always hit or miss. Like, you haven't really felt influence of Ursa. That TP rotation to the top lane was really good. They got two kills, but other than that, I always feel it, it's never Ursa's fun. Maybe I'm a little bit biased, but uh, is it, is it right? teams are not playing. Like, like, the other four players, whenever there's an Ursa on team, they don't play around Ursa. I does have that Aghanim set, they're gonna swap him in aggressively. Turn to fight him, but in comes the Solar Guardian. Really zone back up, just enough the curse there, just onto the one. Big thinking about rejoining the Star Hammer landing onto Yuragi and Matu diving. Kills off Tiger, turns and faces, looks for Ursa. And it's Liquid continuing this domination as they do lose Zai, but the illusion is up. Matsu just going to return back to Fountain, reset, still will have another two minutes left on the Aegis. So they can come for round two in that mid lane. Keeper of the Light, yeah, as you said, shard. with the shard, it's there. another swap. They've got a mark. Right. Forcing a BKB with the illusion. The defensive BKB in. Matsu will get hunted down here by Zai and Matsu. Thinking about the go again, but swap on cooldown means no repositioning tool for the Venge just yet. A little surprised, Team Liquid is not using their voice chat wheel line with the BKB. <laughs> that was a perfect timing it for it. Yeah, it was perfect timing. Oh, it looks like they've got a good read on where BZM is as well right now. This this is where this shard from Keeper of the Light is going to come into a play. Every single time someone tries to play on the side lane, go for an extra wave, it's going to get punished. Recall on Tiny, who does have a stun, but also potentially Dawnbreaker coming in. We didn't mention Dawnbreaker item build. She did go for Yule Scepter, which is super efficient against the Batrider, but most importantly against Ursa. He uses ulti, use that Yule Scepter on him. Like, even Earthshaker, if he farms a Blink Dagger anytime soon, which he does not have in Quick Buy, he, come, he jumps in, you Yule Scepter, you break the combo. Right. So, great item choice 
there, Matu. He's coming in towards BCM's back. Three stacks sticky napalm on him. He just left for one minute on the wrestle, but the damage from the tiny as he stands next to the trees and just launches them towards the back of the cliff through BZM simply. Dyer this is full scanner. lag and Scepter on Tiny. He did uh, disassemble his Echo Dyer's Saber and uh, now he's uh, bringing just the PP scroll. We'll, we'll see if he decides to go for Mage Slayer next. Uh, there, there's uh, not that much magic damage because you're playing against Razor and Ursa. So he might go for, I guess, uh, Echo Saber one more time. Assemble it. Maybe. Dota plus win probability, 4%. Very generous from Gaben, I would say. Yeah, a little bit. Under attack. And Tiny picks up a double damage rune as well. I was kind of hoping that that would be a signal for Liquid to, to run down a lane and look for a proper team fight. I'll hold out for now. Yeah, but we could also see just you know, the, the Daedalus for Tiny as an item choice coming up. If he wants to go for something bigger, but you're right. We'll finish off the Echo Saber once more. What is the move for OG to try and find their way back into this? You know, okay, 4% win probability, they're down by 10k net worth. But is, is second row something they can fight around with the tools they've got? They should get a, a quick peek here on Boxy. And there's that Yule Scepter to break the combo. Still gonna, still, gonna, still gonna die in the end, had the six magic one charges, but with a grenade, he thought he's dead anyway. Swamp on the mid lane, and gonna kill the courier as well. Yeah, Tiger found out. Courier and the Wyvern dead. Do you think OG can fight around second Roche with Curse, with Echo Slam? Is that a possibility? Is that something they that could, they'll be I mean, they, for? they need to. They need to land a good Curse, uh, potentially Echo Slam. Also, you gotta be a little careful trying to go for the high ground as Team Liquid, because that Rider can that's track that's you. That's he does have a BKB right now. Going into which plate next? Very interesting. Really? I'm curious. And I've seen the uh, BZM go for it before. On the Batrider? Yeah. So it's like damage over time with Napalm. Yep. Pretty yep. nice. Yep. How long will it take Matu to queue up Basher? I, I think he got pretty sick of people <laughs> keeping in front of his face. Play right, right now. <laughs> Just keep your eyes on Matu. Three, two, one. Maybe if he gets a little more gold, uh, still still needs to farm farm up. Second row, Sean is gonna respawn potentially in a minute and a half. And OG are all smoked up. Just, just Amar isn't right now, showing in the mid lane. Why do the bench are trying to set the trap around this mid tier two? Suck Liquid into a fight. Now, OG does have the high ground advantage. Matu, on behalf of Aegis, will have to rely Radiant on his BKB and natural tankiness to withstand OG's team fight prowess. He's pretty comfortable just to go back to the tier two. I'm sorry, ready to play Dota right now. He does have both Shard and Aghanim Scepter, so double bounces on Magic Missile. He respawns, uses it again. This is very difficult to, for OG to fight into, especially if Team Liquid will pick up another Aegis plus a Shard. And look at him farm. So quick. Beautiful. Gorgeous stuff. How, how far away from us is BKB? Because it feels like that's another very important gold. item for them. So OG maybe will feel a little more comfortable when they've got that ready in their back pocket. The Liquid, the ones to make the first move, stepping out with a smoke. Dawnbreaker can always join in with the Solar Guardian, so she's not needed with the rest of the squad just yet. First point of contact, looks like it's going to be Amar. Razor has that BKB, could go for a TP home as well. Only the swap to really try and cancel it. He does BKB and link up Matu, but you see how quickly Liquid now will reinforce the situation. The tree's locked in towards him. Half HP, trying to heal up, but he's taken down quickly. Amar gone, the Fisher on the change though onto Insania. Finds a, a trade down here, but Tiger being focused down by Zai. And Matu changes straight towards Sep. A couple of quick whacks of the mace comes out from Matu's bristle back. And Yuragi now be forced to BKB and just TP home. Again, defensive usage coming out of OG. Amar, a little too far away from the team. He tried to no. connect on the personal back. I don't think he's the target that they can go on. Like, they, they need to play with Ursa, potentially Lasso, and then try to kill the back, but it's still gonna be very difficult. There's a toss back, there is a swap. 
careful, Uragi. Look, you had a... They're all over this map. And we said that OG might uh, try to contest Roshan. It's gonna spawn in a couple of seconds. That's right when Sep respawns. So they might have enough time. Have we seen Echo Slam yet? Radiance I don't think I've heard Echo. I don't think so. M maybe one, but definitely no significant Echo Slams. That's for sure. He wants to keep the distance. He wants to stay away from the Bristleback, stay away from the range of Tiny. This is why he's going for a different item build. Sigh. Gonna get Fisher, Flame Break. Does push him around a little bit. The trees, though. The volley. Zones away, OG, and Zai. There's gonna take down grenade. the Fae Grenade and the Flame Break. Yeah, the Sticky Nade Pop. That's oh, what you get. Yeah, beautifully done there. This is every bit of damage, right? The Sticky Nade Pop amplifies and ticks over from the Batrider. That's why we used to see uh, Radiant's Batrider back in the day in Dota 1. Oh, yeah, the good old, <laughs> good old build. They are ready to go, Batrider. This one does have a blink and BKB available, also has gem. But Zai already trying to break the spell. Good positioning for him. He's already dead. Oh gee, they needed to be there. Yeah, that's the... fake, Zai. My bad. Bit faster. Yeah, this... The delusion. It's on to Insania. They'll take whatever they can get. Easy one on to a console while Zai's illusion is killed off by Yuraki. Matu and Mickey turn back, facing off against the Marvies. He's here before the race comes and heals them up as the curse. Trying to cancel out the Toller Guard, allowing the Batrider to be Gibby and run away, but look at Matu go! He just stepped back into trouble. The damage coming. Mickey's streak, it is broken out by Yuragi's Ursa. And Liquid, even after taking second Roshan, is being broken apart by OG. Not too bad of a fight uh, for OG. They they got uh, something out of this. It still shows that they can take the fight, especially if they split it like that, where Ursa can lock onto a target and uh, just get those uh, right clicks in. Man, it seemed like Matu was uh, he's sprinting around the fight, unable to really stick on a, a, a real important key target that he wanted. Uh, yeah, he went left, found the, found the Earth Shank, he was chasing down the Wyvern. But ideally, he needs to be contending with that Ursa, stopping him from munching on the Tiny. Oh, gee, maybe now, with a bit of wind beneath their wings, BZM flapping forward, <laughs> trying to feel themselves. BZM will find a ward. Oh, you can watch that back, Lacoste. And Mickey with a nice little combo there, but it's these reset tools, right? The curse, they yeah, heal. You, this is why Wyvern is considered one of the better counters to Dawnbreaker. You see that ulti coming in. It's an easy setup uh, for your team to reset, potentially get a kill if it's uh, someone who has a lot of physical damage. Radiant's and uh, Matthew does not get attack. another connection. But he will connect from a tier 3 bottom. Something that Radiant's Bristleback is incredibly awesome. adept at doing, going up high ground. And a battery behind him from insane is Gotham. Oh, Mickey finds him. Destroys Tiger in the trees. Mickey now linked up though. Swamped down by Zai. Yurag is in towards Matu. Russell back. Not bothered by it though. Just stands his ground and continues to hit the buildings. Matu with that AC has 600 damage per hit. Standing near Vengeful Spirit. He's bouncing stuns. Seb wanted to fish him, but he can't do it. Magic missiles all over the place. Matu though, being shredded out. But look at the damage on Yuragi. He gets off his end range before stab staff. away. Beautiful sliding bristle back down to the low ground. And Liquid come back in with Mickey to finish off that melee rack at long last. Zai might be the casualty here though, caught up in the Fisher. But this tree volley zoning tool that Mickey is using to keep OG at bay. Now Zai can't move. <laughs> he's, stuck. he's dead. He's trying to find a way to swap uh, someone out. Force staff available on Insania. They've got 200 move speed. He's a slug crawling around on this bench. Matsu will position himself more forward, though, to allow the escape of the rest of Liquid. And while all this is happening, Boxy farming on the top lane did manage to finish off Aghanim Scepter so that the uh, Missed chance, 60% uh, evasion is gonna come in pretty clutch. Playing against Razor, playing against Ursa. Does it work against Winter's Curse? It gives your allies evasion. R2, up onto high ground, linked up again. That's a good question, Gary. And I'm gonna say, I'll look at chat. Look at chat and see what they say. Yeah, they, they, they know way they more know. than us. Chat, no. back. 
Still have Aegis for a minute, dropping very low though as BZM and Amar have spent their BKBs just to hold the high ground. I was always wondering what Zai J is. I think this, we found it. I think this is it. This is the clone from Vengeful Spirit. I think that's the original one is Zai and this one's Zai J. This is Zai J, yeah. What does the J stand for? Vengeful Spirit. <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> How long have you been holding on to that? No, no, I, 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 you came up with that on the spot, did you? No, no, Gary, I, I think of a player yes. and then I go through all the hero list uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. and uh, try to figure out. You know, memes, memes? Mem memes. Any yeah. memes? No, oh, you got me there. It would take out too much work for that. Matsu, again, just waltzes up to tier threes. Radiance middle 30 seconds left. All that immortality. Might be a little bit worried now, but a swap back out. Zai puts himself in, does respawn, the illusion expires. Another swap there, to put him on a little further away, and Matu's cleared through Tiger. Zai getting drained of all his damage, but I don't think he's too mindful of that. Back out of the illusion, another swap, swap back. A great start's coming through, Matu's BKB allowed in a sprint forward, chasing him on. Oh, he pops his wall, he might survive, but the magic missiles keeping BZM back towards Fountain as Yuragi drops. There's a buyback available here. But OG losing exactly. their building. These fights are too chaotic. You have Keeper of the Light, the Glass coming in. Zai very aggressive with the swap. Matumba Man in your face while Tiny's using three Wally and just slowing everything in AoE and also dealing heavy physical damage. That's a full Fatal that's coming from him. Seems like it wants to close this one out, but they're still respecting Bat Rider's lasso. The iron is the lasso. The curse as well. They've also got Earth Shaker here. Smoked up, trying to run forward. They get the lasso in off the map too. The cancel out by the swap zone. Save the day yet again. Another good curse. Mickey whacking into the bristle, but he's not really doing too much damage. So the guard it keeps him all topped up. As I can fly back. Running straight toward the throne. And then another good fixture from Seb, but Mickey hobbles into Amar. I see Vengeful Spirit.